Hi everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. So in today's video I'm going to be going through my March read and wrap up. So we're going to be talking about the 11 books that I read in March across a whole range of different genres. I think mostly fantasy and thrillers. There are a couple of romances mixed in there as well I'm pretty sure and I also had a whole range of different <laughs> star ratings. Everything pretty much from a one star to a five star. So yeah, it's going to be an interesting wrap up. I'm going to start as usual by going through the books that I read that are part of the series and then we're going to move on to talk about the standalones that I read. I actually finished two series this month which was fantastic. The first of which was The World We Make by N.K. Jemison, which is book two in the Great Cities duology. I read the first book back in February because I was going to New York and I wanted to read a book that's set in New York and after finishing this duology I think I can quite confidently say that N.K. Jemison is a new favourite author for me. I gave this 4.5 stars which is the same rating that I gave the first book. I thought that this was a great conclusion to the series and without going into spoilers the scope in this felt much bigger and also the stakes felt much higher, which was pretty impressive considering the stakes already felt quite high in the first book. It was also great to spend time with characters that we didn't see as much of in the first book, and I love how N.K. Jemison's books focus on themes and ideas. I actually thought that this felt more like literary fiction with speculative elements rather than like hard fantasy. Definitely want to read more books by N.K. Jemison. I know that she has quite a decent backlist that I can pick up. I think the next series that I'm going to try from her is the Inheritance series, which I believe was also her debut, so it'll be interesting to see how her writing has changed and developed since then. The next series that I finished is a series that I have been reading since 2021, and if you've been watching my wrap-up so far this year, or if you watched a last month's wrap-up or last month's TBR, then you'll know that I had plans to read this book in March, and I did it. I finished The Realm of the Outlings by Robin Hobb. I am so proud of myself for sticking with this series and finishing it because even though I've enjoyed other books within this series, I don't think I fully appreciated Robin Hobb's writing and how much of an incredible author she is until this final trilogy. For anyone who doesn't know, The Realm of the Outlings is broken up into mini series, so each mini series has its own contained plot and there's a conclusion to each miniseries but the payoff that you get in this final trilogy felt so satisfying and I cried. I was emotionally devastated by this book and I don't think I'm ever going to recover. I am going to do a full series review for The Realm of the Outlings which is going to be spoiler free so if you're interested in my thoughts on this series then that video should hopefully be coming at some point in April. This was five stars, this whole series was five stars and I loved it. So now we're moving on to series that I started in March and the first book that I want to talk about is The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. Always struggle to say that name for some reason but I finally read The Name of the Wind and I really enjoyed this. I'm gonna give it a 4.5 stars. I literally finished it last night so my thoughts are still quite fresh. I've actually filmed a spoiler filled reading vlog for this book which should be going live just after this wrap up so if you've read this book or if you're not interested in reading this book and you want all the spoilers then that video should be going live soon. But in terms of my spoiler free thoughts, I enjoyed this book. I did have a few issues with it, mostly the pacing towards the end. There were some bits that I found quite tedious. <laughs> For anyone who doesn't know, this is a coming of age story following Kavoth, who was the most notorious wizard that the world ever knew. And you have this timeline in the present day where he's now an older man, not like super old but you know what I mean. <laughs> he's an adult and he's telling his story to this chronicler. You follow his early life and then you also follow him as he attends this magical university and I really enjoyed the setting. I actually quite enjoyed following Kavoth. I didn't like him that much, like I didn't fall in love with him and I think a lot of that was down to 
the female characters in this. Kavoth is a teenage boy and he has many teenage boy thoughts and I found it a little bit tedious once the love interest was introduced. So that was my main little criticism but I loved the writing in this, I loved the atmosphere and now I'm stuck <laughs> because I don't know whether to continue and read book two knowing that this series is incomplete and we don't know when the next book is coming out. I did really like this though so yeah I'm kind of struggling with that at the moment trying to decide what to do but yeah I'm really glad that I finally picked this up. I loved how it had such a big focus on music as well. So these next few books that I read are technically part of series however they're written as companion novels so I don't know whether I'm actually gonna continue with them but the first book that I wanted to talk about is Bullet Train by Kataro Isaka. This is an adrenaline thriller. It actually says here on the front it's a locked room crime drama played out at 200 miles per hour and I do agree with that. I really liked this. I found it really compulsively readable but it's not like my favourite type of thriller. It has this satirical tone where you can tell it's not really taking itself too seriously. It follows a bunch of assassins who all board the same train leaving Tokyo and you gradually get to know them and see how their individual missions might actually be linked. I really enjoyed seeing all of the connections between these characters and yeah I thought it was a fun time. Sometimes the humour didn't quite land for me which is why I gave this four stars and not five stars. I can definitely see how they were able to adapt it into an action movie even though the ending of the film is quite different to the ending of the book. The book just kind of ends whereas the film takes it a little bit further and it has like a stereotypical action movie type ending. Next up we have The Fine Print by Lauren Asher which is a contemporary romance. This is the first book in the Dreamland Billionaires trilogy which is a series that follows the grandsons of this guy who built a theme park. In this book we're following Rowan who is the youngest grandson and in his grandfather's will he was basically told that to receive his full inheritance he had to become the CEO or the director, the director of this company's theme park which is essentially Walt Disney World. <laughs> we're also following Zara who is an employee at this theme park and at the start of the book she ends up getting a job as a creator which is essentially the Disney Imagineers. They're the people who are responsible of coming up with new ideas and she manages to get a job like a promotion to work in this team. And yeah it's a romance between Zara and Rowan. I feel like I've done a really bad job <laughs> of explaining the plot for this book but essentially it's a workplace romance and it's also kind of grumpy sunshine. Not even kind of. Rowan is really grumpy and he has trust issues and Zara has a really bright and bubbly personality and I really liked Zara. Wasn't the biggest fan of Rowan but I did like following their relationship develop. It's over 400 pages and I think it was a little bit too long but I gave this 3.5 stars. I read this when I was sick as well a few weeks ago which probably added to my enjoyment weirdly but I was in the kind of mood where I didn't want anything that I was going to have to concentrate too fully on and this was perfect. I ate this up. It has a lot of the tropes that I enjoy and I loved the setting of this theme park. I wanted more of the setting. <laughs> it's not the best written book that I've ever read but I enjoyed my time reading it and I think that needs to count for something. <laughs> Next up we have Rabbits by Terry Miles which I didn't even realise is part of a series until I looked on Goodreads and saw that a second book came out last year and that follows a side character that you meet in this book. So I don't know whether to read that. I need to look into reviews actually. I thought this was good but it was also very confusing and I feel like too much of that can become tedious. So I might just leave this as a standalone. I enjoyed this book. I gave it four stars. It's basically following this main character 
who is obsessed with this game called Rabbits. There's actually this whole underground group of people who are obsessed with this game and trying to find out as much as they can about this game, but not much is really known. The main character is approached at the beginning of the book and told that there is something wrong with this game. And so this is really a book about obsession. It's about this main character trying as hard as they can to work out what this game is, what's happening, and what they can do to potentially fix this game. That probably sounds really, really confusing, and honestly, this book was really confusing, but it was written in a way where the atmosphere was kind of hazy, but I was still following what was happening. Like, I understood everything. I think it's just deliberately written to make you think that you're confused. <laughs> Would recommend this if you like thrillers that have a focus on technology or gaming. I know that this book is based on the podcast, which I think is also called Rabbits. I've not listened to it, but yeah, I've heard that they're kind of similar, like set in the same world, but different storylines. So next up, we're going to move on to the standalones that I read in March. I've actually organised these based on star ratings. So I'm going to kick things off with the worst book that I read in March, and there was no competition. The worst book that I read in March, which I think is going to be the worst book I read this year, was The Teacher by Frieda McFadden. This is quite a recent release. I think it actually came out in February, and I have read and enjoyed books by Frieda McFadden before. I think she has a really fast-paced writing style, and her books are so easy to consume. They're not the best written books, but they're usually a good time. So I went into this with medium expectations. I was expecting to like it, wasn't expecting to hate it. <laughs> I think the main issue that I had with it is that it has a big focus on an inappropriate student-teacher relationship, and from the synopsis it's not really clear that that's what this book is. We're basically following two main characters. The first is a teacher who is married to another teacher, and they both teach at the same school. She is not very popular, people think that she's an ice queen and that she's too strict, whereas he is the popular teacher. Everyone loves him and all of the girls fancy him. Our other main character is a 16-year-old girl who is a student at this school, and she was caught up in something the previous year. There was another teacher who was accused of having an inappropriate relationship with her, and he had to quit his job. So she is now being bullied quite heavily, and that was, again, really difficult to read. There were so many parts to this book that made me feel really uncomfortable, and that's not the feeling that I want from a thriller like this, where it's very light and breezy and it's meant to be fun and entertaining. I didn't find it that fun or entertaining, and yeah, it gave me the ick. I also thought there were too many twists as well towards the end, like the whole ending really, really annoyed me, and I've had this problem with quite a few thrillers recently, where it feels like the author is just trying to cram in as many twists as they possibly can, regardless of even if they make sense. So yeah, I gave this book one star, and I felt kind of bad about it, but yeah, I hated it. There was nothing that I actually liked about it, so that was really disappointing. <laughs> I did, however, then go on to pick up Never Lie by Frieda McFadden. I listened to the audiobook for this, and I enjoyed it a lot more than The Teacher. I think this is actually probably my favourite Frieda McFadden that I've read so far. It follows this newly married couple who are looking for a new house. So they drive out to the middle of nowhere to view this house. However, it starts to snow and it's snowing quite heavily and they end up getting stuck there. So they arrive at this big, beautiful house and they let themselves in. They manage to find a spare key. The real estate agent isn't there, so they're at this house by themselves and creepy things start to happen. It turns out that this house 
house was owned by a really popular therapist who went missing a few years earlier. So you have this timeline in the present day where you're following the wife, and then you also have this timeline in the past where you're following this therapist. I did like this. It didn't go in the direction that I was expecting, but there was a pretty big plot hole that annoyed me. <laughs> so that's why I gave this like a three to a 3.5 stars. Would still recommend it if you're looking for something that's really fast paced and addictive, but not my favourite thriller that I've ever read. Moving on to a romance that I read in March. I picked up the audiobook for Devon and Chris Plan a Wedding, and this was so much fun. It follows our main characters, Devon and Chris, who are contestants in this reality TV show where basically the producers match up these couples and they have to pretend to their family and friends that they're engaged, even though their family and friends have never met this other person. They have to convince them to help them plan a wedding and if their family or friends work out that they're lying, then they get kicked out of the competition. Even though it was really fun, it also had a few more serious moments to balance things out. Really loved how this had such a big focus on family. Devon, in particular, has a difficult relationship with her mom. She's never actually come out to her mom, and she sees this show as the motivation that she finally needs to do exactly that. And yeah, I just thought the characters were so warm and likeable, and I did enjoy the audiobook, although I think the reason this was four stars and not five stars is because of the audiobook. The narrator had a great voice, but I think this needed two narrators because the narrator didn't change their voice enough to distinguish between the two characters and the two perspectives, so sometimes I was a little bit confused. <laughs> Next on my list is Bryony and Roses by T. Kingfisher, which is the first book that I have ever read by T. Kingfisher. I actually heard Nat from Nerdy Nat Reads talking about this recently in a vlog, and I needed a new audiobook to listen to. I found it on Scribd, and next thing I knew, I was listening to it. <laughs> but I really enjoyed this. I'm glad I chose this as my first T. Kingfisher book, because I think it was a good introduction to their writing. Obviously, I don't know for definite, because I haven't read anything else by them yet, but I really enjoyed this, and it was exactly what I expected it to be. It's essentially a Beauty and the Beast retelling, so we're following this young woman called Bryony, who is out in the woods one day when she gets lost, and she ends up stumbling upon this enchanted manor where a beast lives. And the beast gives her seven days to go home, say goodbye to her sisters, but then she has to return to this manor and live with him forever. The book is essentially about Bryony and the beast's relationship. It was really interesting seeing how this linked in with the original story. I thought it was really cleverly done, and I liked Bryony and the beast. I thought they had good chemistry together, and I really liked Bryony as a character. She has this very big interest in gardening, and she was quite headstrong and capable, and it was really fun. It had this lighter tone. It made me realise that most of the fairy tale retellings that I read are quite dark and gothic, and while this did have some darker elements, especially towards the end, it was more witty and sarcastic and just fun to read. It was like an adult fairy tale. The final book that I read in March was Wandering Souls by Cecile Pinn. So this is literary fiction that starts in the past, so I guess you could also call it historical fiction, but it follows three siblings who leave Vietnam in the late 1970s, and the plan is that they are going to travel to Hong Kong and the rest of their family are going to join them a few weeks later. The reason that the family decide to split up is because this journey is incredibly dangerous and many people don't make it, unfortunately, which is what happens to this family. So these three siblings are orphaned and they have to navigate the rest of their lives without having their family, their parents, to guide them. And that's really what the story is about. It's about these three siblings. Instead of resettling in the US like their dad planned, they end up being sent to the UK. So yeah, it's a really emotional story. Obviously, it's about their experience of coming to the UK. The eldest daughter, Anne, has to take care of her younger brothers, and she's constantly questioning her actions and whether her parents 
parents would be proud of her decisions and whether they would agree with the decisions that they make. The main reason this was a four stars and not five stars was mostly to do with the structure. So you have this timeline that's following these siblings, but you also have other perspectives. So you have the point of view of their youngest brother, who is now a ghost and is following them through life and watching over them. Then you also have this unknown narrator who is researching what happened back then and there's news articles and research notes detailing what they're looking into. And I found that really interesting, but I think it should have been more prominent. Those parts didn't appear that much, especially the ghost perspective. I don't think that was actually really needed. That does bring me to the end of this video. So thank you for watching if you made it this far. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books and what you thought of them. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and click subscribe if you would like to see more videos from me, but otherwise, I will see you next time. Bye.